Another topic you might be familiar with is impulse and momentum. Momentum, as you know, is another one of those quantity that is conserved, meaning we can track them. We can talk about some total momentum one and then sometime later. Because it doesn't appear or disappear, it will stay the same unless you add some from the outside, which is what we call an impulse which is defined as delta p is related to force applied over a certain amount of time. But for this specific question, it talks about water from a fire hose, which is a nice mini introduction to when we talk about how fluid moves around. First off, the situation itself, hopefully you have experienced something similar when someone shoots water out of a hose and you try to put your hand in front of that water, you feel a force on your hand because effectively you're slowing down the water. And we can find out how big that force is by modeling it like a momentum problem. Now, water and fluid, they don't hold a specific shape. So different parts of it can move with respect to each other. And so we have to extend our thinking a little bit. It's not that we have one single chunk of solid things moving around. You can picture almost a fluid as to be made up of a whole bunch of little chunks that can all move around and can interact and influence each of the other blobs around it. And the water keeps coming in this case. So the way to kind of break this down is that if you will picture in each second, in each second you have a stream of water, but then you have one particular chunk of water that's moving at the 42 meters per second. This chunk here, that's your 50 kilograms because it's 50 kilograms per second. So in one second, a chunk of 50 kilograms worth of water moves forward at that speed and hits this wall. That's your before picture and your after picture is this 50 kilograms chunk of water has now crashed against the wall and has a V2 of zero, at least in the horizontal direction. So similar to how we do energy, we can keep track of things in the neat little table so that we can apply my momentum equation. And this is for external impulse or external forces. In this case, our system, which is the blob of water, this 50 kilograms worth of water. And what, how many forces are on it? Well, there's of course the FG, but also there is, as it crash against the wall, the F wall which again is by Newton's third law, we know that that is the same magnitude as the force the water exerts on the wall. And break this down into X and Y, complete my free body diagram. We use horizontal and vertical because we're just interested in that horizontal force from the wall. Since this vector equation has two dimension, we're only gonna care about the I hat component. You can put a little subscript X, and since there's only one blob of water, there's only one momentum term on each side. So you have M of the water times V1 plus the only external force in the horizontal direction, F wall times some kind of delta T is equal to zero because afterwards it's not moving. Delta T in this case is your one second because we're still considering within every second what's happening, rearranging and solving unit wise you get kilograms meters per second square which is in newtons and so we get a negative to tell us that the force from the wall is in fact heading to the left in our case by newton's third law then the force of the water on the wall would be 2100 newtons to the right which is what we expect as we shoot a stream of water from a hose onto a wall it pushes it in the direction of the water while the wall slows the water down. So while the discussion with the fluids and the continuous flow, that's interesting. Right now for this chapter, what this question is highlighting is the fact that when you have changes in momentum, that's the impulse and it's related to force times time. So we can relate and find force based on the change in momentum of various bodies within our systems.